Sean right here with the Hall of Famer Flex Wheeler and David Bay moments after the 52nd Joe Weider Mr. Olympia here in Las Vegas where we saw for the sixth consecutive year. Sounds familiar, huh, Flex, with Ronnie and, and prior to that, Dorian Yates. Phil Heath walks off with the title. Was this a unanimous victory uh, for Phil Heath? You know, I, I don't know. I didn't see the scorecard or anything like that, but I think it was a tight race for Were him. Were you here yesterday? I was here. Were you here tonight? Yes, I was. Was that a unanimous win for him? I don't know. Was it? <laughs> listen, You're a great I, help. listen, I think he laid wood. I think he did his job. Um, I'm not too surprised of it, but what I have to say is I think this is probably one of, well, the one, Mr. Olympia, that I've been to to see that many guys in condition. Normally it's like a two guy show or whatnot, but it was so many guys, it was so deep. It's, it's back to the old days, if you place in the top 10, it was an honorable thing. Right. You know what I mean? Well, Flex said it was a, normally it's a two man show. Was this a one man show tonight? Did he win unanimously in, in your mind? Uh, I think, again, he did enough to win. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think it was super, super close as we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. But again, he definitely didn't slam the door. I haven't seen him do that since 2013. He came out, did what he had to do to win. It was close between Dexter and Sean Roden and Rami, but uh, Phil, he didn't dominate. Okay. You know? He didn't dominate. So does that mean Sean Roden could have won or did you have uh, Dexter? I mean, Dexter was first runner up a year ago. Right, actually I was really, um, I was really shocked over um, second and third place. It could have went either way, obviously it did. I guess I'm so used to Dexter taking second and pushing the envelope, but I have to say that Sean Roden is probably the best I've ever seen him in the history of his life. Okay, with that being said, we saw some issues with his stomach up there tonight that we didn't see yesterday. What do you have to say about Sean Roden? Uh, it seemed to be an issue for him last year as well. He came out, a guy with a very small waist, I mean he's hitting his ab shot, that waist is tiny, but he's going through some of his poses, he's relaxing his stomach. Now, Sean Roden relaxing his stomach, it doesn't hang out like some of the bigger guys with the guts, but when he's relaxing it a little bit, it takes away from his aesthetics. I don't know if he's just, you know, he's a real laid back, chill guy, and, and that projects on stage, but um, he, even as good as he is, he needs to control that stomach, keep it a little bit tighter, because it is something that the judges are seeing and they're going to look at. So, um, you know, Sean looked fantastic, uh, as Flex said, his, his conditioning was great. Um, I mean, he, he brought it and, uh, and, and awarded second place, his highest placing ever at an Olympia. With that being said, so what does that leave us with Dexter? Dexter is going to be 47 this year, still in the top three in the world, one of the winningest bodybuilders, looking for that next victory to put him over the top of everyone in terms of victories. Uh, what do we have to do with Dexter? I don't think he has to change anything. It's a matter of apples and oranges. I mean, because I'm, I'm sure there's tons of people out here that think he plays second and even won. I don't think it's a damn thing that he has to do. Dexter was razor sharp. He did his job. He's one of the hardest working men in bodybuilding. I don't think he has to do anything different. Just go to the next show, and it may be different judges, and they might see it completely and, different. And it's funny you say that because we know that Dexter has a history of competing multiple times and improving on the road, yep. and he's going to familiar territory. He's going to Barcelona for the Arnold Classic, where this could be flip-flopped. He, he's a reigning champion. Like I said, it's going to be different judges, and they can see it completely the different way. So I don't think he needs to do a damn thing don't hang his, his head down whatsoever and just keep doing what he's been doing. Absolutely. Big Rami uh, took up the fourth place position. What do you think about him? Uh, you know, I was a little bit surprised with that because, um, you know, we had talked about last night. He came out uh, a leaner package than he normally brings, but he lost a little bit of that wow factor. Whatever he did between last night and tonight, that wow factor came back in a big way. He was fuller, probably a little bit tighter. Um, I'm going to go as far as to say that I wouldn't have had any issue with Rami being the winner tonight. Um, I had him. Uh, I had him in second place ahead of Dexter and Roden. He's uh, he's a really big guy, but he still has good aesthetics for carrying as much muscle as he does. His conditioning was on point. He was full, completely different bodybuilder than what we saw last night, and again, really brought the wow factor. Um, like I said, I, I I thought he was second place, and had they had they given him the title of Mr. Olympia, I'd have been okay with that. Wow, that's a huge statement. That, that means we're throwing genetics out the window in terms of Flex and Sean and the yeah. gift. But where would that leave William Bonac? I mean, that was his best he ever looked. I thought it was the most improved, but his stomach had issues with it yesterday. You know, I give him the same advice that I gave Dexter over freaking 10 years ago. If you can continue coming in that dish and listen, keep knocking on the door, eventually they're going to have to open it for you. And that happened with Dexter and everything like that. As far as uh, um, um, your Rami on predicts on Rami, I, I didn't really see it that way. Um, I think he just needs to put in more time to build that type of muscle and maturity and everything. Obviously, he has the gifts and everything like that, but he didn't have that type of muscle and maturity that the other guys have. Definitely looked a lot better this uh, today than he did last night. So he definitely went back to the drawing board and did some work and everything like that. But I, I am, I'm actually surprised that he plays that high. Well, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's given up almost 15 years to Dexter Jackson. Big Rami's not that old. He's like in his early, I think yeah. he might be 30 years old, I think yeah. maybe. And yeah. Sean Roden's got him by 10 years. Yeah. So Rami could be around for a long time. Um, coming if up. A, if he plays a Jay Cutler game, 
outlast these guys and he'll be kicking ass. Isn't yeah, that what definitely. Dexter did with us? That is Dexter what did with us also. Yeah. So the guy in sixth place, the guy that brought the wow factor at the pre-judging, he he's on our cover of our magazine right here. Big Rolly Winkler. Didn't materialize in the finish, but in the beginning it was wow. Yeah, Rolly's one of those guys where um, you see him standing on stage by himself, and it, he, I mean, he, he is a freak. I mean, he walked out last night, and it was absolutely incredible. The crowd, uh, not real happy with his sixth place finish. Probably the biggest booze we heard all weekend was uh, Rulie being announced in sixth place. But it's the Mr. Olympia. You put him in the lineup with the rest of the guys, and he definitely loses ground. He was a little bit watery tonight. As we had discussed, he was sweating. His tan was running down. Um, so he might have been a little bit better last night. But still, he's a first call-out guy. Uh, that's a solid placing for Rulie Winkler in a lineup with uh, guys like Roden and Dexter and Phil Heath. Absolutely. He's got nothing to be ashamed of. Flex, you yeah. saw the waterworks coming on as he started yeah. to get worked. He was in the first call-out. That second call-out, he started to fade. The wow factor started disappearing. Right. And then we started seeing a little bit of the flaws. Right. I think it's just a problem with him that's just coming in too full. Too I mean, uh, uh, as we said yesterday, imagine this guy coming in 10 pounds lighter of water. I mean, he's just such a wow factor. But, you know, again, how do you take 10 guys and put them in five spots? That's damn near how deep it was. So somebody's going to be unhappy. At the end of the day, you can't take a 10,000 square foot house and put on a 7,000 square foot lot. Yeah, it's a lot of muscle. We had some other guys rounding out our top 10. We had Justin Compton picking up the rear at 10th place. Dallas McCarver moved all the way up into 8th place from uh, out of the top 10 a year ago. Yep. We saw Steve Kuklo not able to make that top 10. Victor Martinez, not, is he on his last leg, Victor Martinez? No, not at all. I mean, it's apples and oranges again. He can go to another show, another judges, and, and he can be up in the mix again. Definitely, Absolutely. definitely. Uh, advice for you for some of these new cats that came up here. Cedric McMillan took defeat very graciously, but he had one of the more symmetrical, pleasing physiques. A lot of people gave him a loud, loud, loud uh, applause for that. Yeah, absolutely. Cedric came out and put on the type of routine and performance that we expected from Cedric. Probably even a little bit more dramatic than what he did at the Arnold. He was His posing routine at the Arnold was very classical, but it was critiqued a lot for being too slow. It almost to the point where it went from classical to a little bit boring. He came out tonight to some really good music, put on a fantastic routine, and he's top ten. You know, seventh place, uh, again, seventh place for Cedric McMillan with the lineup that he was going against that's a really good placing for Cedric he you know he talked to the press conference about wanting to get a look against the top guys you know he didn't necessarily get a look against Phil and uh, and, and Dexter and Roden but he got a look at the rest of the guys uh, you know fourth fifth sixth place so no complaints there he's gonna see those guys on the road I'm sure if he happens to go on the tour because the tour is gonna continue on one week from now in Barcelona Spain in the past five years it was in Madrid right. this will be the first time it's in Barcelona why because it's a bigger venue uh, bigger attendance, more fans. So Barcelona, we're coming to you. And then immediately after that, we're going to head over to uh, Kuwait. Some of the other notables, Kevin Lafroni, yeah. we put a feather in that cap. He's yeah. done. But at the, going out this way, I mean, this is what he said. He just wanted to do it one more time. Yeah. Did he get what he was looking for? I think he got what he's looking for. I don't know as far as plays and stuff. Again, we're hardwired as athletes. And at the end of the day, there's first and there's last for us. That's, That's all it. we think of. But I think the love and appreciation that he was showed here, I mean, who would not want that? How could you not walk away feeling like a people's champion? That's what he missed. I think that's what he wanted to hear one more time. And that's what he received overwhelmingly. I mean, from, from David Pecker announcing him for his photo being up on a big screen, from being able to give a tribute, pose and routine, and then to be sent off publicly the way he should be. I mean, it's just, who would not want that in this sport? Yeah, he got, got a lot of respect from the older crew and the new crew. He gained like 200,000 followers on his Instagram. He charted a little bit of that. I mean, while he may have been defeated on the stage in the placings, He's a winner here tonight. Yeah, you know, it reminds me a lot of uh, the last Rocky movie, the last one he did, Rocky Balboa. He's, you know, he's talking about he's still got something a little left in the basement, wants to find out where he's at, comes out, doesn't walk away with a win, but walks away as a champion. And, and, and there's a lot of reflections between, I'm a big Rocky movie fan, so that's an easy comparison for me, but a, lo a lot of similarities between, between those two storylines. So moving f what about, I was going to say, you said something about the figure. Go ahead. I didn't want to forget that. <laughs> oh, uh, well, we got we to gotta hit 212 and figure. Um, we got our, our repeat figure champion, uh, Latoria Watts. N no real surprises there. Um, Nicole Wilkins slips to four play fourth place. Um, uh, Candace Lewis, uh, her highest placing yet with a runner-up. And Sid Gillen jumps uh, quite a few places. I think she was uh, sixth or eighth last year, all the way up to the third spot. But uh, no surprises with Latoria. Flex Lewis. Victorious number five, is this uh, a routine with him? I mean, we saw Phil win six, this guy wins five. What's going on? 
He did his homework. I mean, I took a beat in, on the boards because I was predicting him doing so well and everything, but he backed it up. I mean, this guy's a, a, a premium champion. He does his work. He takes it serious. He's on a grind, and I love the way he poses and presents himself. He's a professional. I'm not surprised. Kudos to him and keep doing it. Yep. Ashkenani, or Ashkenani, is he here to stay or what? Yeah, man, he's, uh, he's the real deal. You know, I saw him in Tampa, and he came out, and the first thing I said is this guy can push Flex Lewis and Jose Raymond. And then I saw him in the lineup, and I'm like, ah, I better pump the brakes a little bit on comparing him to Flex and Jose. He came out, beat Jose, and compared well to Flex. I mean, this guy's got a ton of muscle on a small frame. He's a sh Even for the 212 class, he's a short guy. The only critique is that his upper body is so big that his legs look like they might be just a tad undersized. If he can bring those legs up just a little bit more, um, you know, he can really push Flex Lewis to the brink. Well, one thing we saw a lot this weekend was a lot of repeat champions. I mean, James Flex Lewis, number five. We saw Phil win number six. Juliana Monacarney won three times, I believe it was. Um, with third time yeah is that a sign of the times I mean how is this happening that we're having all these multiple titles being given to the same people every year we're gonna come here next year and see the same replay that watching the same movie every year or are these guys that much more superior in victory than the other challengers well I don't know if they're that more superior in everything but you know um, it's it's a situation where you can have twins walk through the door mm -hmm. and two beautiful twins women it's me and Sean, we walk that way. Uh, we're married, but we walk right. that way. But say that you like the twin on the right more so than the left. It's presence. And a lot of times it's just presence over another person. If you can steal that presence from a guy on stage and you're enabling the judges to look at everybody else and give them a fair shake. Right. So obviously when you walk through the door and you have that name already, they're going to be looking for you. But when you bring what they're expecting, then you created that wow factor. So it, I'm not really sure if we'll continue doing this, but listen, if these guys keep doing the job the way they're supposed to, then yeah, you are. At the end of the day, as long as who's supposed to win, win, I can give a damn less. Well, nobody has an argument with Phil walking off with number six, $400,000 richer for his efforts. And a year from now, The Rock has announced that this competition will be televised live on, I don't know if he said live, did he say live? Uh, no, did he use the word live? CBS. On CBS he Sports next year. So that's a big deal. Yeah. That's a big deal. A lot of people will be watching at home. Be on back in Arnold's days. So yeah, it, be on there. that's a huge thing. But um, what do we got here? What's the, oh. This is the Olympia issue. Yeah, I know Lee Haney's got a feature. It was the one you showed. Yeah, Lee Haney's got a feature. Ruley's on the cover. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are going to be talking about Ruley Winkler after this weekend. So make sure you pick up the newest issue on right. shelves now. So, uh, I, you know, I wanted to add something real quick to what Flex was saying because I actually just had this conversation yesterday with a gentleman um, after prejudging was done last night talking about. Is this a sign of the times with these athletes repeat winning and winning and winning? And you know what? We just had the Olympics on a couple of weeks ago, and there's a lot of similarities there. You talk about the best athletes in the entire world and the, the, the top level of competition, and you can still have somebody that's that much better. You have Usain Bolt. He's just that much better. You know, this female swimmer, Katie Ledecky, she, she beat a, an entire pool of the best swimmers in the world by like a pool's length. So we see a lot of reflections of that in these physique sports where we have the best athletes in the world. To me, the figure division is, is the prime example of that. Latoria Watts is, everybody's here and Latoria's here. And that's not a disrespect to the rest of the competitors. That is just Latoria being that much more genetically gifted, built for this sport in, in a similar fashion that we see some uh, athletes in other sports. So, um, you know, and, and we see that. Phil, I mean, Ronnie, you guys competed against well, Ronnie. To, get, it's to segue into that, are we going to see another Ronnie Coleman and Phil Heath? He's got to do it again to, to match Arnold Schwarzenegger right, right. for seven next year. Right. Then he'd have to do it again after that to match up with Ronnie right. and Lee Haney. Then he'd have to go another year to try to break that for number nine. He's young enough to do, it. He, enough to do it. he can get it done by the time he's 40. He's young enough to do it, and I think uh, to, to segue in what, uh, what David was saying is sometimes you have a great athlete, but you have a great squad behind them pushing them to be even better. Mm -hmm. So they become better and better. And when these guys are gifted like that, that's what you're doing. You're forcing them to be even better. So it's not like they're repeating. You're actually better in them and making them be the winner and everything like that. So you can definitely well damn well see that. I mean, uh, Phil is definitely young enough. Yep. Um, he's not slacking whatsoever. Um, I think he was better tonight than he was last night. He shut the door on the way he looked last uh, last year and everything. So if he continued to do that and uh, and chips while they may, he very much might be able to make that happen. Well, there's no argument from, from us three as far as uh, Phil winning, and the judges saw it that way again for the sixth consecutive year. Phil Heath walks off victorious with the Sandow Trophy, which is supersized, by the way. Did you see the new, the new one? <laughs> it's almost like the Arnold Classic. Like, Wait a minute. Arnold Schwarzenegger was here in the house tonight. A lot of people here celebrating. Just got done talking with Ronnie Coleman. We're going to head over to the after party. We're also going to get some of the footage from the, uh, pre the press conference tomorrow. Or the uh, yeah, uh, guys, we got a superstar press conference tomorrow where all the champions are going to be talking about their wins, some of their experiences. Last year it was a great one. Um, after some of the athletes get a little bit of food in them and they're, and they're not on stage anymore, they lose 
loosen up a little bit. They get some get fired up. Some are more chill. So uh, it was a really good press conference last year. Um, looking forward to another fun one tomorrow. All right, stay tuned to the website. We'll get all that footage out there for you for Flex Wheeler, David Bay. I'm Sean Ray at the Mr. Olympia 2016.